In AutoCAD, whenever you want to make some changes on an existing object, you have to apply the editing commands. But before you edit these objects, you have to select all these objects. And we have a number of methods called object selection methods in AutoCAD with which you can select objects effectively. But in this video, I am not going to go through all those object selection methods because I have already created a video on this topic. Please click on the link provided at the upper right corner of this video as well as at the description section if you haven't gone through that video. But this video is about object selection but I am not going to deal with the various methods but instead I am going to give you some useful and informative tips related with object selection. So let's get started. Now let's quickly go through the tips. Here I have a number of objects on the screen. Whenever I select an object in AutoCAD, you will see this little blue halo effect. And you will also get grips on the object. Grips are these blue dots. As you are aware, based on this grip, you will be able to perform some editing commands. No, I am not going to touch that aspect. Let's come back to this halo effect. At times, this halo effect will be undesirable. So how will you disable this halo effect or turn this off? For that, just right click at the hardware acceleration button at the lower right corner of the screen. Now we'll go to graphics performance. Here the graphic performance is turned on. Usually the graphic performance should be on in AutoCAD to make the best use of the graphics card you have in your system. So what I'll do is I'll just disable this. And when I select this, you can see that that halo effect is no longer appearing. But you are not supposed to turn off the hardware acceleration because that will affect the smooth display performance when you work in AutoCAD. So how will you disable the halo effect without turning off the hardware acceleration? For that, you can click on the Express Tools tab, then click on System Variables. Here you will get an interface which will display you all the system variables you have in AutoCAD you can scroll down till you reach a system variable called selection effect. So I'll click on that. Here it will show you the value. Present value is 1. When this variable is set at 1, you will see a halo effect. So I'll just turn it off. I'll give the value 0. Now I'll just go back to graphic acceleration and I'll turn on the hardware acceleration. And when you click on the object, you can see that there is no halo effect even if the hardware acceleration is turned on. If you want, you can even disable or turn off this highlighted effect or dotted appearance of objects. That is by using another system variable. So click on system variables button again and uh, locate a system variable called highlight. And you can give the value 0 for the highlight variable. Now when you click on the object, you won't see any highlighted appearance or change in appearance on the object even if it is selected. So I hope this is a new information for you. Next, I'm going to introduce selection filters. Selection filter will let you choose or select an object based on a criteria or condition given by the user. The conditions can be of different types. Let's see that. I'll start with the filter command. Then you will get object selection filters dialog box. On my screen, I have a number of circles and lines and these circles are kept in different layers. I want to select all the circles. So click on circle. So there is a condition. Now I want to add this condition to the condition list. Condition list is displayed here. You can just click on add to list to add this condition. Now apply this condition to all the objects on the screen. So you will get a select object prompt here. I'll give all. Now this condition is applied to all the objects on the screen. Only the circle satisfy the condition because you have specified the condition as object is equal to circles. Next we will add one more condition. So I'll go back to the same command. Right click and repeat filter. And I want to select all the circles which are in a particular layer. So you can add one more condition. The condition is layer. Here you can select a layer. There are two layers I have created. The circles with the sign color is kept in CIR2 layer. So I'll select that layer and OK. And that condition is added. Now we'll apply this to all objects. 
Now you can see that these three circles are selected because only these three circles satisfy the two conditions you specified. Now I'll add one more condition. So you go to filter command again. Now the next condition is a logical condition. You can choose any of the logical condition from here. I want the radius to be less than or equal to 140. So you can click on less than or equal to symbol. I'll type the value 140. Now add to list, even that condition is added to the list and you can apply this condition to all the objects on the screen. I'll type all. Now you can see that only this particular circle satisfies all the three conditions specified by you. Hence filter command is a very powerful command using which you can select objects based on the conditions specified by you. The condition can be property based or logical condition and you can combine these conditions the way you like. In fact, in AutoCAD, the same activity can also be done using the quick select command. You can type Q select using the keyboard to get a similar interface. Next, I'm going to introduce you to an interesting selection method. Actually, I've been using this method ever since I've learned AutoCAD. And in this method, you should learn to write a simple Lisp expression. You know that AutoLisp is an internal programming language in AutoCAD. I'll come out with uh, tutorials on AutoLisp uh, later. Here, I'm just going to write an expression. That is, I'll start with the left parenthesis. Then I'll type set Q, yes one. Then another left parenthesis, SS get, which stands for selection set get. Then a right parenthesis and one more right parenthesis. Because in a Lisp expression, there should be as many right parentheses as the number of left parentheses. Now I'll just give an enter. Now I've got select object prompt. Now I can select any object of my choice. I'll select this particular sofa set, for example. Now what happened is all these objects will get saved in a variable with the name S1. Let us come back to that expression once more. I'll press the upper arrow key to get that expression again. In the variable S1, the entire object will get saved. Okay, you will get a clear cut idea about all this when you learn a Lisp systematically. But now I suggest you to just by heart this particular expression. It's very easy to memorize. Now, how will you make use of the selection set later? For that, what you have to do is, I'll give, for example, move command. I'll click on move. At the select object prompt, I'll type exclamation S1. Exclamation S1 means objects which are saved in the variable S1 will be selected. Now that is selected. Now there's a base point and there's a second point. Okay, I'll undo this move. Now let me define the next variable. I use upper arrow key to get the same expression again. Because using upper arrow keys, you can scroll through the previous commands you have given in AutoCAD. So I've got this back. This time I'm going to define another variable with the name S2. Give enter. You have got the select object prompt. I'll select this particular fridge and this oven as well as the sink and enter. So all these three objects will get saved in the variable S2. So that later on at any point of time, if you want the same objects to be reused for any editing command, all you have to do is just give exclamation that particular variable name. For example, I want to copy all these objects. So I'll click on copy. When I master select objects, I'll give exclamation S2. So those objects are selected and you can copy it to any desired location. Now we have defined two variables and these two variables, we have saved two sets of objects and you can use these variables at any point of time for any editing command. For example, I want to erase these objects which are saved in these variables. So I'll click on erase, exclamation S1. So that is selected and exclamation S2. Those objects got erased. It's similar to using groups in AutoCAD, but I personally feel that this procedure is simple and straightforward. And now you can decide whether or not to use it. Since I've been using it for several years, I'm quite used to this procedure. Hope this tip was useful and interesting. Hope this video was informative. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel Sabir Cat if you haven't subscribed already and hit the bell icon to get instant updates on all my future video uploads. Thank you so much for your time. 
peace be upon you all